The Education of the Child in the Light of Spiritual Science was an essay that Rudolf Steiner wrote and published in 1909 based on several lectures that he had given prior to that time about the need for, in his view, an education that met the needs of modern children. And I would say that that primarily meant an education uh, based in a view of the human being that came from uh, his work in anthroposophy and that valued the imagination of children. Steiner's view is radical for its time in that it may well be the first time that anyone has tried to describe the growth of children according to developmental stages. And long before Piaget talked about stage development, Rudolf Steiner characterizes the development of children through stages of roughly seven years each. You can be a little bit too pedantic about the, the, the seven-year period, but um, there's really little doubt in this day and age, 110 years later or so, that children um, during their early childhood years are radically different from elementary school age to children who, again, are radically different from adolescence. So for Rudolf Steiner, the physical, the soul, and the spiritual are all part of one living organism. Um, so changes in the soul or spiritual constitution of a child are also manifest in the physical growth and development of the child. We acknowledge that very clearly in the changes that occur around puberty and adolescence. We treat children uh, differently. In fact, we call them young adults, for instance, after they reach puberty and adolescence. And we recognize the physical changes of sexual maturation as indicating those changes. For Steiner, the physical changes um, in the transition, let's say, between roughly early childhood and elementary school uh, had to do with um, the loss of baby teeth and so it's sometimes called the second dentition and that that was just uh, not to be too pedantic about it but that that was a physical change that gave evidence of a deeper change in the development of children and basically prior to change of teeth or prior to the beginning of elementary school Steiner believed or understood children to learn best through imitation and example. And so the environment around the children, including the adults around them, the other children around them, the beauty or lack of beauty of their surroundings, the way people speak to them or spoke to them, um, everything around the child influenced it because the child lived in its environment um, and learned through imitation and example. Once children enter elementary school, um, once they have lost their baby teeth and grown their grown-up teeth or their adult teeth, um, then they look up to revered individuals. If they're very lucky, they look up to their parents and their teachers as people they can emulate and who have what Steiner called a natural authority for them. They become, you could say, disciples of the adults around them in the best uh, use of the word and in the best circumstances. And so teachers in that sense have a tremendous uh, responsibility to be the kind of people who children um, can in fact look up to um, and uh, learn from. In this period Steiner understood children to learn best um, when education appeals primarily to their imagination. Steiner recommended that teachers teach in pictures and parables and allegories rather than appealing to children's intellect, which isn't really yet fully developed, but really more to their imagination and emotional relationship to the world. Pictures and stories are complete unto themselves and build up the, you could say, the storehouse of knowledge in a context of meaning for children. So it's not that they're sort of just accumulating uh, fact after fact, but because the, the, the information or the, the world they're taking in is taken in through um, pictures and parables that have meaning, the, um, they, they gain, you could say, an ever, ever larger context for understanding the world around them. And then uh, around the time of puberty, when they begin to be able to think 
more easily in a logical uh, and clear and synthetic way, the storehouse of memories and pictures that they have from their childhood is available to them um, to sort of be chewed over uh, now in uh, a way that we think of as uh, brain-centered or intellectual. Uh, because of the importance that Steiner placed on imagination, you could even say imagination with a capital I, which is to say not one capacity among many, but a human capacity that underlies all knowledge. Steiner thought it was very important for children to have toys that engaged their imaginations. And he gives an example of a doll and the difference between a doll in which all of the features are already painted on in a lifelike way, leaving no room for the child to imagine different moods or expressions, and a doll that he describes as being a handkerchief with knots tied in it and ink blots for eyes. And that doll, although it's made from the simplest materials, um, leaves room for the child's imagination then to create anything it likes. The doll can more easily be happy or sad or overjoyed or angry, whereas a doll that has a sort of uh, single insipid expression painted on it um, is just that for all eternity. So it's a little bit oversimplified to put it this way, but I think it's, it's also somewhat true to say that in Steiner's view, this first seven-year period um, relies on the child's understanding of the world as a place that is good. And children are best served if they live in a world of adults and surroundings that are good. In the next seven-year period, roughly seven-year period, um, Steiner thought it was incredibly valuable if children could understand that the world is beautiful, hence the reliance on pictures and parables and stories and allegories. Once young people reach adolescence, Steiner felt it was really important that they understood that the world could be seen in terms of truth and falsehood. And so teachers as guides can lead young people to understand the truth in many different ways.